Oh man, Jason Hernandez, man. Jason Ooh. Hernandez. So what? You're you're the only boy, or how many? You got brothers and sisters? Uh, no. Nah, there's uh, all together. With, there's three of us. It's uh, my older brother Robert, myself, and then there's my younger brother Brendan. Okay. A lot of people may know him already. Tells the barber. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, man. So, but yeah, man. The real reason why I'm here is because. I think you're very interesting, man, and I think a lot of people don't know your story in the background, and I think a lot of barbers in the industry, especially veterans, man, I think uh, the new generation should know, you know, who we are, what we've gone through, the experience, the ups and downs. I think we don't hear those stories, yeah, and um, mm -hmm. I, want, I want people to know that, know that, know what Jason went through to get where he's at today and where he still wants to do more and accomplish more, so... Uh, so what you were your family's from here at Chicago Illinois or because I've been I, rem I was seeing some of your Facebook and throughout the years that you're you're moving back and forth different places I don't know if you have families in other other places no nah, I'm born and raised here in the south suburbs of Chicago we are here in Blue Island uh, born and raised out here I I left to, to Texas San Antonio Texas yeah, yeah I went yeah. out there for about a year a little over a year what was it like a, last year uh two years ago now two I years ago was, yeah so you just got back like two years ago from there yeah, maybe a little, maybe about a year and a half ago. Yeah, okay. Going on two years. But yeah, I just got back. Um, I'm doing my thing out here, you know. We uh, we had the shop over there on 122nd Cicero. We sold that. Wow. Uh, now my younger brother's doing his thing over here. I'm working in downtown. So let's, let's, go, let's go to that. Tell me the beginning of that. That you said you said you had, that was your shop, or your, or you guys yeah. like partner well, up. Tell well, me that. Tell me the bit. Tell me the beginning. Tell me like stuff that people okay. don't really know about. That. <laughs> Well, it, it all started because I mean I, I started cutting hair when I was like 16. Um, it, it just kind of happened, kind of fell into my lap. I never, man, you would have asked me if uh. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Ahead. Yeah, don't worry about that. Go. You would have you would have asked me if uh if I was gonna be a barber in, in 15 years. I'd, I'd have looked at you and laughed like, nah, it's mm -hmm. not gonna happen for me. So what? I mean, you said you were 16. But what was it? What was the what, what, what caught your eye? The the hustle, the money. Yeah. It, 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 it was quick money. It was it was it was something I was good at. It was something that nobody had to teach me that I taught myself. Uh -huh. So by it by it being something that that I was doing, that's what I loved the most about it. Mm. That I could say that nobody helped me get where I'm at. I did this on my own. I taught myself how to cut hair. Uh -huh. But at the same time, I. I did have a lot of mentors. I had a lot of teachers. I, I had a lot of people that that along the way, as I, I started getting things, were, were guiding me in directions that I needed to go. Just because at the same time, when, when when you're trying to learn something, if you, if you're too hard headed and you're not listening, you'll never learn. That's great. That's and, true. And and luckily, the the people that I that, that I was looking up to were also friends. Older than you, right? Yeah, yeah. A lot older than you? Over no, 20s not too much. Just, I, just a couple years? Uh, well, when I was 16, Sal was, I think, he was 19, 19 maybe. It's my homie Salo. A lot of people know him, Salo the Barber. Mm -hmm. He was working at Dynasty Cuts at the time. Uh, I wasn't doing nothing but cutting my little homies out here. You know, cutting them in the garage and kind of just doing my thing. And, mm -hmm. and I didn't really know how to fade or taper. Wow. And Salo calls me. He's like, yo, I heard you're doing your thing in the garage. And that word spread then, right? Yeah, like, you're like, your guys, right? Tell me, yeah. like, oh, this guy's cutting it in the garage. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, so I'm like, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm cutting, I guess. I don't know if you can call it fading, but I'm cutting. <laughs> He's like, man, come cut with us over here at, uh, at Dynasty Cuts. He's like, we can huh. teach you a lot. That's so cool. We can guide you in the direction. Because as long as you know how to do it even, you know, nice little lining, you know, you'll be straight. I was like, well, I can do the even. I don't know about the lining yet. He starts laughing. <laughs> So I pull up to him and, uh, <coughs> and he guided me. He he you know he he showed me how to how to do a beard, how to how to do a lining. He he took the. the so you could say he really kind of like even though you self taught yourself, the 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 techniques he was showing you without you even really asking for it. Exactly. He, he, he willingly was able to show you because like, I was already doing them. Right, I just wasn't right. doing them right. He's like, look, you're you're holding it right. You're 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 in the right area. You just gotta stretch the skin now. Mm, the little things that you're like, ah, I got it now. So it's like, I am stretching the skin. He's like, nah, you're not. He's <laughs> like, you're, you're moving it, but you're not stretching it. Right. I'd be like, ah, okay, okay. So it. when it came to doing the lining, I'm over here trying to struggle doing it. He's like, man, try it with some spritz. So mm -hmm. he spritzed my lining one day and it just gets hard. And I'm okay. 
So he guided me with little little, little keys, keys yeah. on certain things that I was already kind of doing, but not doing properly. Right. And that's why I tell a lot of young barbers, man, go to school because in school they teach you these things. Mm -hmm. but I mean, you're gonna learn if you if you're in a shop and you're trying to do it on your own. And but school is is a must, man. Yeah, and then you hope though that you get a a good school like. Yeah. Like, do you think like um? Well, see, when when, when people say that, you know, as a, a as an instructor in a way, I like to I like to defend my schools and my my, my teachers because they work hard out there, man. Yeah. They're, they're they're teaching these students what what they're supposed to. Because at, at some of these schools, and I won't name names, of course, but they okay. don't they they don't they don't they don't give these instructors everything they need, man. Yes. Like they're, it's they're, like school. It's like like what's going on right with now. With teacher, with CPS, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like all they're asking for is nurses in every school. You know, I mean, not, not, not to get off subject, but that's right, a whole right. other subject that of course. You know, Chicago needs to touch on. <laughs> right, right, right. But at these barber schools, they're you know they're, they're giving the book and they're telling them teach them the book. So it's like what I tell these students is you know your your instructor taught you what he needed you to teach you. The book, the 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 chemistry, the 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 anatomy, the physiology of all of that. Now it's up to you to go teach yourself the advanced classes. You want to be advanced in scissor work? Go ahead, because in that book, all I, all they all they're teaching you are the basics, how to hold it, what the shank is, what what, what the lever is, the whole nine. They're, they're just teaching you the basics. It's up to you to teach yourself. You know what? I'm so thankful you said that because there's there's things you just said that I think a lot of guys don't understand, and I think that's that they need to hear it. That's that's exactly what some guys are missing out and they're you know either they're talking shit or whatever but I feel like you're that's an excuse excuse oh you're pointing fingers why someone you're not where you're at in your barber career or at the level you're at because uh, teacher soul or mr. soul didn't teach me no like you just said you have to be willing to you know on your own and go do the extra classes right you're right so, yeah. and it's, that it's and a like must. yeah and it's and I think like right now social media and I, I'm always going to speak about this and hopefully you know when someone's you know hearing our, the podcast or hears our conversation could be like oh I didn't even know I didn't even think about that is bro our our Instagram is like an actual camera view inside our lives obviously and if you like a certain barber message him hey you think I could swing by maybe sweep up the, uh, your hair for like an hour just so I could learn something or maybe you know that you admire them you want them to be your mentor and if they say no then you know what kind of character they were and if they say yes they're willing to help you and those little techniques like you say sal you never know you're asking they're not telling you to come but if you hear um barbers you know veterans and you know great master barbers or they're good at what in their craft you should take advantage of that because i feel i see i hear and i see a lot of barbers like my doors are always open and, and it's nobody true nobody comes through veteran barbers will tell you that we're not done learning we're never we're mm -hmm. never done learning i'm I'm not. There, there's a lot of techniques that, that even now that I see cosmetologists doing, you no, know, and it's it, it has me looking like okay, <laughs> like how'd you do that? Yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. Show me that, you yeah. know. And as long as you're open-minded and you're and you ask, because you know, say closed mouths don't get fed. hundred percent. You you gotta open your mouth and you gotta ask these questions so you can learn. If not, you're gonna sit there and you're gonna be lost. You know what I love? I love about your 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 perception. perception? Uh, that you're outside when you when I sit down with you and I'm talking to you and I've, I've, I've had many conversations with you but you show like what you talk about the the like you say like a uh, typical example of like just because I'm dressed like that just because I look a certain way doesn't mean I don't know what the hell I'm talking about or what exactly. I am. You and you're like you're, you're, yeah exactly and it's like that's what I love about you man because you you have that and it's not a bad thing it's a great thing because some people could relate to that you know, and it's like, it's so dope to hear you talk, man, and hear, and hear how much knowledge you have to give to the industry, to these young guys. And I feel like they need to hear it. That's exactly why, another reason, you know, why we're here right now. No, you're right. You're right. You know? You're right. I agree there. I agree mm -hmm. there. If it wasn't for the mentors I had, like I said, like Salo, I, would, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Because mm -hmm. going from, go, going from learning with Sal, you know, I never wanted to go to barber school. I didn't. I, you know, I started. I started going to Larry's. It didn't really work for me. Why? Because I wasn't. I wasn't mentally prepared for that. I, I was still trying to do what I was doing. I was still trying to hustle. I learned. You know, I learned the game quick on this. It, 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 for me, seeing the money to to go sitting in class, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't yeah. what I wanted to do at the time. 
So I stopped going to Larry's. I only went to Larry's for a little bit. Mm -hmm. I ended up getting licensed at Silk and Classy. Yeah. But okay. going back to working when I was working with Sal when I was 16, he 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 guided me. I worked with them for a few years. From there, I went to work at, at Official Cuts. I worked with Moody and uh, uh, Mr. Official for a few years. They, they they taught me a lot about business. You know, when it came to working with other ethnic. Uh, ethnicities and textures of hair yeah. you know that they, they helped me learn a, a lot in, in that area but from there I just I wanted to open up my own shop so I opened up a shop out here in Blue Island and it was funny how old were you when you opened it <laughs> I was 18 <laughs> two years after you got you yeah. learned it right yeah that's why oh, it's cool. like long story short I went uh -huh. from you know learning to to, to wanting to Get to it. take advantage of this right. until, and I, I like I said I learned to hustle that's mm -hmm. why I went, that's why we started going to Silk and Classy was because I wanted to open up a shop and I needed a license. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, you know what? When I went to Silk and Classy, I wanted to go sign my little brother up. Okay. It was like he wanted to go to school. I was like, All right, look, you go to school, you get the license. I'll start getting this little shop together and we'll go from there. Wow. He's like, all right, cool. So I go to, I go to Mr. Williams and Mr. Williams was like, man, why don't you come, 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 come to school? I'm like, man, I'm cool. What you going to teach me? I started laughing. And then he looks at me and he's like, man, son, I can teach you to teach. So it's like, I, I'm not as close as her and her mom and her sisters and her brothers. They're really close and I admire that, I love that. I, I look at that and I'm like, man, I want my kids to have that. So when we were in Texas, we, 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 we got closer, we, we got real close as a family. Mm. Like we, we, we learned each other. We, 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 we learned a lot of how, how to, yeah, how to communicate, how to, how to rely on each other to have fun. Cause we didn't have nobody in wow, Texas. Wow. That's amazing. That's a and great, a it great was. And then that's why I, people say like, oh, did you fail in Texas? Is that why you came back? No, I don't, I never failed. I, I did really good in Texas. I ended up working at one of the, mo the, the, actually the, high, the best shop in San Antonio, on the Riverwalk in San Antonio. And you know, I, I had a badass condo. I went from getting there in my truck to having a badass condo out there. Like, I, I enjoyed my life out there. But my wife is really close to her family. My kids were really close to their cousins. So we came, I came back for my wife and kids. Yeah. And I told them, I was like, you, you, she, she did the hardest thing that she's ever had to do was leave her family for me to figure out what I want to do with my life. Wow. So for when she asked me, like, can we go back? Like, I miss my mother. I miss my sisters. You know, the kids miss their cousins. I said, yeah, I was like, let's go. It was time. Like like I, you, you felt I, good. I, and I learned and I, 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 I earned a mentor out there. Mm -hmm. Working with Juan, Juan opened my eyes on, on understanding that when running a business, you can't put the jeweler to lay bricks, but you can't, and you can't put the bricklayer to sell jewels. Everybody needs to be in their place. Juan Gonzalez owns Urban City in San Antonio, Urban City Barbershop. And Juan Gonzalez is not a barber. Never has cut hair a day in his life. But he has the best shop in San Antonio. I'm not throwing salt in any other barber shop in San Antonio. Shout out to all the guys out there, champs and everybody doing their thing. It's just that as a business, Juan is, is, is doing it. He's, in, he's opening in Florida now. You know, he, he, he has a structure. He, he understands he that he has that he in, in his business, he has a team and he is the coach. If you are not allowed to be coachable, he will not hire you. I, I you know what that word is very that that word has been uh, in my vocabulary uh, for for this entire year. That's a very important uh, word, I think, in, in, as an owner uh, to choose coachable barbers, coachable you know, uh, people to work for you, man. That's very true. And, and, and it's understanding that as a barber, you're an educator. You don't know it. And, and some barbers choose to, to not take the title and just try to say, oh, I just want to cut hair and do this. Yeah, you are. But at the same time, you're an educator. Why? Because that person in your chair, you're educating them. You're, you're letting them know what they need to use, what products are good for them. You know, what's, wh wh why their hair is flaking out. I mean, you're not a dermatologist, you're not a doctor, you can't completely diagnose them and give them a medication, but at the same time, you can, you know, ask them a couple questions. Do you shampoo, do you condition? No, you don't condition. That could be a big reason on why your scalp is dry. Mm -hmm. Understanding, oh, what's a good conditioner for you? Well, I'd go with moisture for you, I, your hair's dry, your scalp is dry, and that's just simple things that we know, that we're taught in school. 
Mm-hmm. When I went to Silk and Classy, and I don't know how other schools do it, but you know, we, we learned how to shampoo. We shampooed before we, we grabbed clippers. And it's those little things that we did in school that we do for our clients. And it's simple. Instead, instead of talking about, you know, what, what girl's ass I was looking at, <laughs> you true. feel me? Let, let, let's talk about, yo, man, what's up with your scalp? Let, let, let's direct the conversation to, to the client. And you'll educate that client more than you'll know. You'll have clients tell you, man, I never knew that. Mm-hmm. I mean, to this day, man, I mean, you, uh, do you get the, like, when people come into your chair for the first time? Like, I, I love it because they'll be like, you could tell they're like, since they don't know you and they're there for the first time, they'd be like, uh, yeah, so how long you been cutting hair? And they're kind of <laughs> nervous and you're like, don't worry, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take care of you. But you're just like going through the process because you already know what's going to happen and you know they're going to love it. You you're know? right. And that's, that's my thing. It's been my new thing lately that I've been going live for all my new clients. Wow. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I've I was been, wondering like, like hey, he's going live a lot. And it's, it's been all my new clients. Why? Because I've had a lot of people message me and ask me questions on how do you deal with new clients? And I show them, I don't, like the people that are going on my live, no, 90% of the time now, I don't know them. I never cut them. I, you know, I'm asking them questions. But as soon as I go live, I start asking the whole consultation. Hey, what, what haircut are you looking to get? You know, when's your, when was your last haircut? Right. And simple things like that, I learned in Texas. I learned in San Antonio. And I, I take it back, I learned in school, but I was reminded in Texas. Why? Because he, like, again, Juan was never an, a, a barber, never an instructor, never any of that. He just knew that he wanted to run a business. He knew that that we are in the service industry. We are there to give a service. Mm-hmm. He, he knew that, that coming to his shop, he wanted every customer to get there and have a set, certain set standard on what they were going to get there and get. And we were achieving that. Yeah. And little things like that were reminders. Like, I learned this in school. Mm-hmm. Like, but we need that. We all need that. You know, when I do, you you know me as more like, you know, like, you know, I try to turn the negative into positive all my life. That's why, you know, I go by that. And, you know, I give back. My reason why I love giving back, bro, and love doing free haircuts is to remind myself how thankful I should be. That's the reason why I do it. No, you're right. Because I do it to purposely, in my mind, I know where I'm at today, but... Bro, I purposely do it so I could feel that I know what it is to get a dollar, man. What it is to get those twenty-five, forty-five, hundred, fifty dollar haircuts, and it's like a, I try to remind these, you know, everybody that comes and joins me, uh, these, you know, uh, give back free haircuts, providing free haircuts at schools or whatever. You need that. You need to. <coughs> Excuse me, but you need that just like what you just did to yourself. You 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 tr- you 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 did a whole three sixty for your life and. I do that just, you know, in, in the community for myself, for my personal growth and, and um, you know, just understand, like, how grateful I should be at all times. No, That's you're right. It. It's, it's, it's truth. It's understanding that sometimes even when it, it shouldn't be about the money, it should be about the smile on that person's yeah. face. For sure, man. Like, cause I, that's why I enjoy cutting kids. And that's why I, 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 I look down. I don't even like calling the person a barber that does not cut kids. You, you, don't, don't you dislike when a lot of guys be like, oh, oh yeah, I don't, don't cut, cut kids. kids. Like, you ain't a barber, bro. bro. You're just another motherfucker that cuts hair. Excuse my language. <laughs> it's not, look, it's cool, it's cool. It's, Wait, this is uncut, man. So It's, it's truthful there, because it it's is. like, man, How, you, kids give you the most appreciation when, they, when you give them the mirror and they just smile like, wow, and what'd it, you do to me? And you know what's so crazy? I think that they're like, people don't understand if that really uh, up gives you an upper you know advantage on, on your level of skills and in your game in the industry because if you could manage to calm down a kid do it in, in 10 minutes 15 because that's where you gotta your be speed. quick <laughs> you gotta be you have quick. to have a technique that's gonna work and it's like you're gonna the the moms are more grateful and appreciate because that's their keen that's their you know that's their love of their life you know there's their that's their number one so if they see you treating their baby boy the love of their life they're keen like like the top notch, like if you were to do anybody, I mean, they're going to tip you the most probably or give you the most love and, you know, they're going to keep coming back and that's long-term clientele for a See, very See, that's why I always tell, I, I tell young students, when you're passing out business cards and everyone should pass out business cards, it's the only way you're going to get where you're going to get it as a barber. And I always give business cards out to families, to, to the guy walking with his kids. And you know what the best part about when we cut kids' hair when they're like, you know, young? We cut them up so dope 
that the uncles and everybody else are like, man, he has a better haircut than I do. And you're like, who cut his hair? And that's how you gain that clientele. You know? No, you're right. You're right. So, and and then that's why I, I go back to to saying that as barbers, you know, you got to be grateful for 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 the little things that this that this job gives us. Yeah. Like it gives us the opportunity to uplift someone. Like to to. For instance, I I, I cut this one girl. And this is, I did this in San Antonio too. I I, I cut this girl. She was a she was a football player, and she was cutting her hair off. Cause it was getting in the way of her helmet, but it was her last year. She kept it through the whole year, th- through all four years, and she was doing it for herself because she wanted to take football more serious. She wanted to, to to fit in a little bit more. She honestly said, "Like I'm, I want, I want to, I want to fit in. I'm, I'm tired of, of you know, people looking at me more of a girl. I want to be known as a football player. Wow. So just cutting her hair off." Cutting it low to a, a, it was a pixie cut, a nice low comb over type of thing. And it made her feel. Self-confidence, man. It made her feel better. It made her feel like she was going to fit in. And not saying you have to fit in with anyone right. to, to, to be who you're going to be. But if it makes you smile and if it makes you feel better within yourself. And you accomplished that. You did like, that for her. I got to, I got to have, she walked out smiling that day. And you're like, man, that's what I do it for at times, man. Don't even know. One of, one of my, well. The one of the ladies that works for me always says, "We're like celebrities. We all have all these people, but in the end, sometimes we're by ourselves." Yeah. Everybody's yeah. gone. <laughs> we're by ourselves. We're like, you know, we have our our you know our family or whatever, but we have all these. Even people. then, that's why they say treat your wife the best, because <laughs> your kids are gonna leave you too. True. True. Okay. Now that you're saying that, I got a couple pictures, man, that I uh want to okay. show you. And tell me what you think about the first thing that you think about. Talk about what uh, what that picture means to you. Okay, all right. So I'll start with this one. Oh man, <laughs> what does that picture mean to you, man? Oh, you yeah. took it back old school here. Yeah. Who's that? Tell me who's that and like what is that? What, is, what when you guys took that picture? Do this you is, remember this the year, or do you what, what was the in, occasion? This is in JB's barbershop. Okay. And uh, what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. And uh, the thing was, uh, we had a friend of ours pass away. He was uh, he was delivering a pizza. He was at work. He was delivering a pizza, and he was hit by a uh, by another driver. Okay. And uh, he's, and he's in there. No, he's not no, in he's the not picture. In we we we. We came together here. We did a fundraiser here this day. Okay. And uh, there's another picture to this one, okay. where uh, where we're holding the uh, the collections of how much we collected that day. We cut hair from I think it was maybe like seven eight in the morning to about seven eight at night. And uh, we he was our, I think he was the last person we cut if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And, and that's uh, Brandon, right? Yeah, I that's see. my brother. It's it's uh, myself, my brother, and you got Miguel Avila. Uh, he don't cut hair no more, but he's still one hell of a barber. Okay. And then uh, it's Bobby Murillo, and he still cuts hair. He actually cuts hair when uh, when we sold the shop. The uh, ACGs bought it. His buddies bought it. He got. It. He's still a really good friend of mine. He's a brother of mine, actually. Cool, cool. All right. Here's another one. That day. <laughs> when I got married. <laughs> this this is the day that uh, that I told my wife I was gonna give her the world. Nice. I'm almost there, baby. I'm almost there. <laughs> Oh, I like I like this one. Oh, oh my son! What well, that that moment you took that one? Uh, we were. Uh, What's his name? At Robert Evick. I named him after my older brother, because okay. like I said, my father left when I was a kid, and my brother took care of me, right. so I named my first son after him. But this day we had just got out the car wash. It was nice out. Yeah, it looks beautiful that picture. He was man. loving it. He was feeling himself. I was like, okay. <laughs> All right, uh, this one right here. Ah, oh, it's me and Kike. That's I had just got this face tattoo. Let me see. Okay, so what does that represent to you, the, the, the face tattoo? Because, I mean, that's noticeable. People could see you and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, what's up? And it's, what this, is it? this represents that uh, it, it, it changed my life. Okay. How old were you when you got that one? Oh, uh, man, uh, honestly, I can't remember. <laughs> a couple years ago, though? Yeah, I've had it for... I had it before my daughter was born. She's already about to be four. 
I don't know, like six years now, maybe six, okay. seven years. Cool, cool. Junior Diaz did it for me. He's my little cousin. He's on Nightmare. He's on uh, Black Ink Chicago. Nice. He's one hundred level tattoo artist. Nice man. But uh, so yeah, man. I mean, that's... Ta- barbering changed my life. So I, I, I tattooed it on my face. So every morning when I look in the mirror, I remember. I remind myself, like it's a reminder. So where I started, who I am, and that mm-hmm. can nobody judge me or or, or put me down. Because everybody's always pointed their finger at me. Even since I was a kid, I went to alternative school since literally like seventh grade. I was in seventh grade, I started going to alternative schools all the way to senior year in high school. I was in an alternative school. Mm-hmm. Everybody told me I was going to end up in jail. All my teachers, they told me I wasn't going to be shit. Right. So it's like I was always I was always looked down on. So I, everybody always thought I wasn't going to be shit, that I was going to be ended up tattooed. So I got the tattoos and I am shit, though. <laughs> I think I'm a that, father. I think, I think, yeah, yeah, you are, man. You're, you're a crazy, you're an amazing man. I see it, and uh, like I said, I wish nothing but the best. And hopefully, uh, this won't be the first or last time we'll talk again, man. No, I definitely will not. But uh, I think that's a, I think that that should be a good ending right here, man. I appreciate your time, bro. Man, I appreciate like, you coming in. Appreciate you putting me on the podcast. Uh, just a little quick shout out to you know anybody that wants to follow me. Um, Yoda the Barber on Instagram, Yoda underscore the Barber. Uh, you want to follow my brother, he's one hell of a barber. He's El Tells Original on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people that some upcoming guys might know him, but the ones that started with the Instagram and everything a couple years ago, the beginning, like between 2013 2014. They know who he is. Yeah, they know who he is. is. If you, you, you guys, guys that's somebody you gotta put on your uh, on your podcast. We, we, we are, we are, we are, man. It's not the first. Like I'm saying, like I, I just can't wait for the the video. You know, and, you know. Hopefully, when I get to that point, we're like. There's gonna be cameras all over us one day. Oh, let's do it, man! I'm with it. I'm with it. So, and uh, again, quick shout out to all my mentors and teachers that ever helped me get where I'm at. Uh, Mr. Williams, Juan Gonzalez, Sal, Big Lays, everybody. Appreciate you guys. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be the barber I am today. And any message, like let's just say a positive message to the young guys coming up, or you know something you would like advice, the ups and downs you went through, you know, give them something like that you feel like it would be nice encouraging for them uh, if i'm gonna leave some everybody with this i'm gonna leave them with this because somebody left me with this as a conversation ending one time and it's been stuck with me ever since he was 75 years old he told me when when i'm 70 now that i'm 75 i'm scared he's like i don't i've never lived life before i've never been 75. you're 29. he goes i've never he goes you've never been 29. he's like so remember one thing you're always going to be scared there's always going to be ups and downs he says, but at the end of the day, you gotta live your life. Cause he's 75 and he's never been 75 and he's learning how to be 75. Wow. I'm 29 and I've never been 29. I'm learning to be 29. Wow. So if you're 17, you're 16, you're 18, you're 36, you're 46, you ain't never been there. Figure it out, learn it, understand it. If you got a break, break, shatter. So you can figure out how to put the pieces back together and you know where it went.